Um, now a poll in Bola newspaper in Portugal shows 70% of voters thought Ronaldo shouldn't start against the Swiss tonight. I mean, you heard Ronald de Boer uh, earlier on <laughs> speaking with Ali and Laura yeah. that, no, if, if I was in charge of Portugal, he'd be on the bench. Do you think that's the right way to look at it? Well, is, he, has it become a huge distraction? Well, he's not in charge of Portugal, so it's, it's in the relevance. The fellow that's in charge of Portugal is Santos, and he's quite essential, and he's called out the idea of... Ronaldo is, a, is an enigma, and he's a challenge, and we've seen some of that. I don't know enough about Ronaldo's personality to say whether he's a difficult person to deal with or not. I do know that he has a, a very high opinion of himself, which has been based upon a very, very successful career, and, of course, he'll have that opinion. I do know what I saw in the interview with Piers Morgan, and some of it I thought was an absolute whine on and wasn't necessary, um, and was utilising an opportunity to create an outcome that he wanted. Um, and he's doing the same things that he did when he was at Manchester United, which is not being happy about certain things, letting everybody know that he's not happy about it, and creating a, a story that involves him at the centre of it. And I don't know why he needs to do that, because he's such a unique individual, I am actually in the camp, and people won't like it, that, are, that, that I believe he's the greatest player that we've seen between the two of them, Messi and Ronaldo. I think he's better than Messi. Other people will disagree on that. It's about opinions. I disagree so I think from that. a football point of view, I think he's, 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 his credentials speak for themselves. I don't quite understand what the, the benefit of running a poll in a newspaper is to decide who whether he plays or not that's to me is always very divisive it was done to Neil Lennon up in Scotland and I didn't like it then when the Scottish newspapers did that I think that was particularly clever but that's how newspapers roll and you have to roll with the headlines well it's well, obvious they ask people what they think well you know news is, newspapers surely the title is, they're the consumers the, surely the title is in the clues in the title it's a newspaper you're creating news you're not reporting news but that's, we'll have a difference of opinion on that we saw Portuguese Obviously. fans we saw Portuguese fans uh, whose first default setting was everybody else was wrong and Cristiano Ronaldo was right. Yeah. So when we're speaking about Portuguese fans, they seem to idolise their hero, yet a newspaper says that ultimately 70% of their readers don't want him playing inside the side. It's a story that's being made because Ronaldo puts himself in the way of a headline because no one expects him to do a Brazilian samba when he comes off and no one expects him to be thrilled... But there is a ne it's not a necessity for to do the things that he does. I like... The, the manager's not going to get away with it, is he? He's going to have to address the issue of Ronaldo because even if he didn't care about the gesticulations behind his back, someone in the media is going to care on his behalf. Oh, so it's, media's, it's a media's job to put it to well, the manager. Well, what did you think of Ronaldo coming off? Was, he strop, was it a strop or is, does yeah, it show well, he's a winner? Uh, you know, again... You know, the manager has to now deal with it because somebody in the media has brought it to his attention. If he wanted to deal with it personally, he'd have dealt with it, not necessarily through the media, but he'll be forced to deal with it through the media because Ronaldo is such a story. Right? And with that in mind, I think it, it now becomes be a problem. to be honest. If well, I don't, I'll, leave off, I'll leave off, Jim. If it was a Swiss player coming off the pitch, no one would pay any bleeding attention to it. It's because it's Ronaldo. Ronaldo's the headline, I think the focus. The Swiss manager would be asked. And there probably wouldn't even be cameras on the Swiss bench. They'd probably be more focused on somewhere else on the pitch. But the Ronaldo is the ongoing story. And the tragedy of it is, is currently it seems to be a negative ongoing story. It seems to be you know, a, a degrading of the Ronaldo reputation. We're now moving into the territory. He's doing pretty much a lot of that himself, isn't he? Oh, no, that's my point. Yeah. That is precisely my point. He's yeah. the architect of his own derision, and that derision seems to be becoming more vociferous because you've got the issue with Ten Hag and it wasn't his fault. Right? You've got the issue with Man United because nobody cared about him and the tragedies in his life. Now you've got him going off to Portugal and now there's an issue with the fact that something's happening in a Portuguese camp. Now a newspaper in Portugal is, and of course the media in Portugal all against him and I don't know why they would be because he's been a national hero and produced significant outcomes for his country on a number of occasions so I don't understand besides perhaps sometimes it does exist, journalistic jealousy, but I, don't, I shouldn't... No. Just, of course it does. We've seen articles written by journalists... You name that, it. I was, well, what you, member you, of the Portuguese uh, media would be well, you, jealous I can, I can, of I can take you back to newspaper articles that are written about Marcus Rashford and his ownership of houses, and there was no reason for it. It was purely and simply journalistic, the, the politics of envy, pulling the top down. They so weren't sports journalists. It's not sports journalists. What, the, the article that we're talking about was an article written by a sports journalist about Marcus Rashford's acquisition of houses, and it was a really cheap, what low blow article. journalist? Daily Mail. can't remember the fellow's name, but I'll dig it out in the purpose of his conversation in a minute. I don't think it was a sports journalist. It was. We did it on this show. On this show, and I took it, and I took. Do you honestly I took, I, think there are sports journalists in the Portuguese I, media I think, who are jealous? I of think there, I think journalism in most countries has a, a is ra, is is racked 
with Here's why Meralda's in focus at the moment. After the interview, he got sacked but by you, the club that you, you just, say you just, is the biggest club in the you world. You just posed the question. That's why he's in you, the news. You just posed the question. His every move is being studied. You've just posed. No, jealous you've of just him. posed the question. I want to be Ronaldo. You've just posed the question, Jim. You talked about the journalists. Why would they have an agenda against Ronaldo? Mm. Why would they write such things? I've been on the receiving end of journalism. I've seen journalists write things about me that are patently untrue uneducated and I've sued on the back of it so don't ask me why I think journalists would behave in a certain way ask them the bottom line is is that if there is a feeling from Ronaldo it'll be supported by a newspaper running an article they are running an article to get a to get justification behind their position I don't we, we've seen no blowback from Portuguese supporters we didn't see it very many of them but the perception we got, which surprised me when you wanted to interview those Portuguese fans about Ronaldo, was straight away, boom, Portuguese fans, we're all behind Ronaldo. We don't concur with the view. Man United were wrong. That's Ten right. Hag was wrong. Yeah. So now we've got a newspaper telling us that 70% of the Portuguese people don't want, or Portuguese people that read their newspaper, don't want this fella playing in their side. So what do you think of Ruben Dias's comments, Manchester City and Portugal? Uh, he's appealed to Portuguese journalists to create unity. Instead of creating a divide. Well, you tell me. You're the one defending journalists. Oh, that's not their job. Um, I'd say, Ruben, thanks for that. But well, when, it's also it's also it's, know, all, it's not our job to create it's unity. It's also not that's their, maybe well, the manager's right, job. Well, let me, to okay, create unity. It's also not their job to create division. Maybe the federation, but it's also not their job. Or by that logic, but the division has been created by Cristiano. It's not your Simon. job as a journalist Clearly. to create division. Well, Clearly, in, in your mind, in your mind, it might be who's. But you've got a player that plays alongside him suggesting that the division is being created by the media. He's part of the team. He's part of the established environment. So when he doesn't think it's a sulking straw, does that not create division? I, I think the media in countries are the most divisive, disingenuous, Go for it. disruptive, Go on. Um, duplicitous, double standards, Go hypocrites on. that Go I've on. ever laid eyes upon. Fantastic. And I can keep on going. See what and you I really think, mean. And I think the, the free press sometimes has an awful responsibility that it doesn't live up to. And some of the press that we get in this country and some of the press we get in other countries are an absolute scandalous disgrace. But going to this particular Do you need point... A Do you no, want a, I don't. A Just because it's your profession, you can defend it as much as you want. But everyone, everyone knows what it is. Okay. No one has the balls to say it. And it may well be, it may well be something that consequences me in the long game, given the fact I'm in the media, but I don't care. Because I I'll call it for that. how I see it.